Welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the why of programming by learning mnemonics and having a discussion related to the following topics. First, we're going to talk about scope. What is scope and why is it important? Then we're going to talk about variables in the context of scope. What defines the rules of scope, including the LEGB rules? What's the difference between a variable's scope and a variable's lifetime? Then we'll move on to talking about namespaces, or what I like to call variable spaces, and have a conversation between whether we should use the terms names and bindings, or variables and assignments. And then we'll finish by talking about why some variables have a single underscore, some have a double, and most have none. Scope, up next. So our first mnemonic today is going to be a penguin enclosure that you would find at a local zoo. And it's going to represent our concept for scope. And the reason I think this makes a great mnemonic is because a zoo is broken into these separate environments, right? Each one is built to be conducive to the animals that live inside them, like the way the penguins would be cold to create like an Arctic atmosphere. And the same way scope sort of defines this boundary around variables, and the variables inside of that are grouped together in some way. So think of the penguins that are like waddling around in their Arctic enclosures as variables. And then think about them being at home, where they belong in the Arctic enclosure. But if later that day you saw a penguin, say, like walking around with the giraffes, you'd probably want to tell like zoo security that like the penguin's out of place and it would be instantly obvious to you that that is the wrong environment for a penguin to be you know waddling around in so what is scope and how do we think about this variable scope well for me i think about it as a variable that's sort of born into an environment if it's used inside of a code block that's where it starts and that's where it probably will live however there are permissions that can be used to say you're allowed to go outside of this. So the penguin, for example, wouldn't really have permission to go over to where the giraffes are because it needs to stay in a cold environment. But, you know, hypothetically, maybe it could go visit like where the polar bears are, except it would get eaten. But it would be the right environment, temperature. So let's talk about what defines these rules of scope. And there's actually a concise set of rules that can be summarized with the acronym LEGB, or LEGB, as I like to call it. <laughs> But anyways, L is for local, so variables that are assigned in any way within a function, and they're not declared global inside of that function, meaning that they can leave and go anywhere in the entire zoo that they want. E is for enclosing, so variables in the local scope of any and all kinds of enclosing. This is sort of the nesting that we can think of, like it's either enclosed inside of a script or inside of a function or inside of a block of code or inside of a class. It's thinking about this enclosure, just like how the penguins have a limit to where the area is that's cold that they want to be inside of. And then there's G for global, which is a really important one. And it's also the one that comes with modules, another thing we'll talk about soon. But when you make a variable, assume that it's naturally local. It's born into a small environment. It will stay in that environment its whole life. But by saying a variable is global, it's like taking someone who lives in a little town and, and their family lives in a little town, but they're like, I'm going to go to the big city and make it. You know, they would be the person who's stamped global. They are going to go out into the big city and make their way in life, but they have to be sort of specified. By default, you end up born in your little environment, you stay in your little environment, and that's all that you know. So we'll actually use a keyword global. You'll see the words in front of the variable, which will give it that global permission. And then the last one is B for built in. And these are variables that are pre-assigned inside of a module or inside of Python as a whole. So some of the examples are like open, range, syntax error, and they came with the Anaconda download. So these variables already have their scopes defined, whether it's global or in some cases restricted. They're always defined ahead of time, and there's nothing we can do about it. They're just part of, part of Python. OK, so what's the difference between a variable's scope and a variable's lifetime? Because they have similar jargon, but they're different concepts. And because a variable will go through a process of mutability, like we learned in our last video, where they evolve over time, the variable will have different states at different points. It's mutable. So if you think about it like our penguins, like their variables, the penguins are going to go through different states, right? It'll be like a baby penguin at one point. It'll be a, a reckless teenager penguin at another point, And then it will finally be like a very stable father penguin, but it will go through those different states. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a variable's lifetime. But the lifetime is separate from the scope. It can change its entire life all within the little community that it's in, the penguin enclosure in this case that we're using as a metaphor. Or it can go through all of those stages while it's traveling. It can be a global penguin.
So our next mnemonic is going to be one of those kind of lame hello my name is name tags that you'll see at corporate events. And it represents the topic of a namespace. And the reason I chose it is one, because the names and the namespace are similar. However, remember, we're kind of using name and variable interchangeably here. But I like to think of it as a list, a list of all of the variables that we have access to. And that visual, that mnemonic, makes a lot of sense to me. So I actually kind of imagine it like somebody who has like a whole bunch of middle names, like, hello, my name is, and it's like Dylan, like, you know, Muhammad, Buddha, Matterbull, you know, whatever. Can't think of a bunch of middle names, but it shows all of the names that I possibly could go by. The same way that a namespace is really like a giant list of things that will show you all of the different variables that you have access to. Okay, so let's talk about names and bindings versus variables and assignments, because you heard me hint at it a second ago. But this course is designed for beginners, so we're going to stick to using the terms variables and assignments. I think it's easier to think of what we're doing in programming that way. But someday, as you get more advanced, you're going to, without a doubt, run into the equivalent of the grammar police in coding. And they're going to give you a lecture about how it's not really a variable. It's more of like a name. And it's not really assigned. It's more like it's being binded to the space in memory. But they're really used very interchangeably. And I don't think you're going to have any problem in this course or for a long time by thinking about it as a variable and an assignment. So when that day comes, it's just important to realize that he or she that's this, you know, code grammar police, they were, you know, probably abused in some way as a child. And that's not your fault. So just politely excuse yourself and move on. Okay, so what is a namespace or a variable space in a more technical way? So this namespace is a way to see the variables that we have in our scope. It's actually going to be a function that we'll see in the next video that we can put onto our code that will return everything that Python has access to at that moment in that scope. One more concept to layer on is that a name can map to a function or any other Python object. And remember, objects in Python are everything. So importing a module can bring in an entire namespace along with it. And we haven't talked about importing modules either, but imagine being able to just bring in a whole bunch of pre-written code and calling the big complicated stuff in simple ways. That's really what a module is about. And when we do that, it's going to bring in a namespace, which will come with its entire list. And that list will not just be pointing to variables, but also sometimes Python objects. And in general, I would think of an object as a variable, but remember, it's a more broad term. And finally, let's talk about another mnemonic, a streaker. And he's going to represent the public, private, and protected variables. Now, I didn't bring this up with our variables video because we weren't quite ready to understand this idea of permissions without understanding scopes and namespaces. But now we can. So I chose the streaker as the mnemonic because you know he's publicly showing his privates. And then he's also trying to protect himself before being tackled. You know, I probably could have put more effort into that one, but like. Sometimes it's just good to go with the instinct. So what are public, private, and protected variables anyways? And how are they related to classes? Well, I don't want to go too deep into classes, because that's a big part of our course later on. So I'm just going to quickly have you think about classes as an area of our zoo. Like all of the animals in Africa, for example, are in one corner of the zoo, and all of the ones from Australia are in another. But just leave it at that for now. Now, public variables are going to be the variables that are visible to all of the classes. So this is not talking about where the variable is, but now we're talking about where we are and what we can see. So private variables are variables that are only visible to the class which they belong to, meaning that if you're in the African part of the zoo, you can only see penguins. But maybe if you're in the Australian part of the zoo, then you can't see. Like if you're with the kangaroos, you cannot see penguins. But if you're with the elephants, you can. OK, so let's talk about these variables. Now, we make them with whatever names we want. And if we put a single underscore before our first letter, what we're saying to other programmers, other people who read our code, is that we want this class to be private. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is. It's not like an actual functional thing. But it indicates to other programmers that the attributes or methods we'll talk more about is intended to be private, meaning keep it where it's supposed to be. We don't want it going everywhere and causing problems. However, there's nothing actually special that's done in the code end of it, like during compile or runtime. So that's not real protection. That's just for you to think about 
about. That's like an organizational method. But then there's also double underscores, and this is technically called name mangling. So identifiers or variables with these double underscores, also known as dunder, I don't know why, but I mean, I know why, but it's stupid. They get their double underscores replaced with the class names. Right. Once again, all this stuff has to come together later. But when you have a class, it will take those double underscores and replace it, sort of forcing the variable to be inside of a namespace, inside of a scope. So the important takeaway is that if you have a variable called double underscore penguin, Python is going to see it as the name of the class, like Africa double underscore penguin. It's going to add the class name. Okay, so we're at the end of this video. Now, in summary, scope was our main topic, and we learned about how scope is a way to put a boundary around a group of variables, and we used our penguin enclosure as sort of our mnemonic for this. Then we learned about the actual rules for scope, the LEGB rules, which stand for local, enclosing, global, and built-in. And then we talked about how a variable's lifetime is an independent concept from a variable's scope, and how the lifetime is the evolution of the variable, and the scope is where it can go during that evolution. And then we talked about namespaces, which I called variable spaces to keep our naming conventions in line, and we talked about how names and bindings is just another way to say variables and assignments for our purposes. And then we learned about the code grammar police and how it's an inevitable reality that we're going to have to deal with at some point, but we're going to stick to our gut with variables and assignments, even if other names make some people feel smug. So we talked about ways to actually see what's inside of a namespace, which we'll show examples of in the next lesson, where we can actually print out all of the variables, all of the objects that the namespace is referring to. And finally, we talked about public, private, and protected variables. This was our streaker for the mnemonic, if you unfortunately remember. But we talked about how that can really help in times when we want to be in different places and see what we have access to or protect certain variables from other people or other parts of our zoo. And finally, we talked about public, private, and protected variables. We talked about the single underscore in front of a variable's name, making it private, and how we can put a double underscore in front of it, and it actually becomes name mangling. And just in general, how it's important to think about the levels of permissions we have from other places in our code and what they will be able to see and have access to. All right, so thanks for sticking with me for this example. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I will see you in the next video so we can actually look at some of these examples with real life code. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.